Hi, I'm Holly Pike. If you'd like a trial of the Generations software that I use for digitizing, please visit TryGenerations.com. This video is a recording of a live video I did for my previous students. You may hear references to You Can Digitize or YCD. That's my old website that is now closed. My new website is digitizingschool.com. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. I'm going to bring in a piece of artwork. And this is a butterfly that I drew. I'm going to image this template. And it's 114. I'm going to leave it at that. That's a good size to work with. OK, I didn't have a butterfly image, and I hadn't discussed artwork with Holly, so I thought I would just draw something quick. I opened a blank screen in Generations, and I took my Create Continuous Line tool, and I drew a butterfly. And it looked about that bad when I started. But um, I played with it a little bit, made it better, and then I took a screenshot of it so we would have something to work with. So that's where this artwork came from. And if anybody really wants it, I'm more than willing to share it when we get done with the webinar. So I'm going to delete that one out of there. Whoops, wrong. There, control delete to get rid of it. Um, OK, here's our strange butterfly. And there's a couple different ideas that I had to bring this off the fabric and more dimensional. So most of it involves doing freestanding lace. I'm going to bring this up full screen so you can kind of see it. Some of my ideas were to um, digitize the butterfly as freestanding lace and then um, make another, make a copy of it and reduce the size. So when you dry both of these butterflies, one of them you would dry somewhat flat. The smaller one you would dry somewhat with the wings kind of up, and then you would glue them together on the body part. Um, the way I would approach this, I'm just going to kind of go through it here and show you how I would do it. I'm going to grab my area tool and I'm just going to outline this whole thing. And like I said, my artwork is not the best here. So I'm going to probably be ad-libbing along the way because things aren't totally connected. And I'm just going to cut right straight through the body here. I'm not as fast as Holly either. If you have questions as to what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, this is going to be very simple. Um, a lace base and okay as Holly would say that's a yucky color so we'll just do a pink and that's a little better easier to see here's our base or our outline of the butterfly wings and this is going to be the bottom part of it um, we need to create our layers to hold everything together. So while it's selected, I'm going to hit my space bar to open the complex properties. First thing you want to do when you're creating a lace base is to remove the underlay. We are not going to need that. Then we're going to go up into the complex tab and we need to adjust the density. Okay, I'm going to take this down to about 4.5 and we get very open. One thing I forgot to do, you can also, to get to your stitch properties, you can, when it's highlighted with the marquee lights, you can right click on it and go to stitch settings. That opens up 
the Stitch Properties box. And the one thing that I wanted to do was use smooth edges on this design. And click OK. You can see how that straightened out the edges all the way around. This will make it easier when the um, satin stitch comes along to catch all of them to make sure that nothing falls apart as it's stitching out. So we need to create another, a few more layers here. We're going to highlight it and copy, paste, paste, paste. So you can see now I have four of them in my stitch sequence there. Let me catch it and pull it out a little farther. There we go. So it's a little bigger. Okay, so we have, they're all going in the same direction. We need to alternate these so they create a nice weave. So I'll select the second one and I'm going to turn it opposite of the first one and generate. Oops, there we go. I'll select the third one. Now we're going to want to go kitty corner. So I kind of look and see where those two make a square and I go kitty corner through it. Generate. And the last one, we're going to go back the other way. Doesn't have to be perfect. You want to have it so it looks kind of nice. There we go. That's a little bit better. Okay, this is your basic lace base for just doing, I guess Holly calls it mostly quick lace. <coughs> so now you should, um, I like to look and see where my ins and outs are going. So I'm in over here, out over here. Let's see. And then we're going in back out over here. That's not bad. Now we have in and out in the same place. Um, that's going to start building up in that area. You might get a big knot there. So we might want to try moving. Oops, I forgot where we were. Okay, that was out. So in, we probably want to move that out somewhere else along the line so we don't have a knot right there. I'm going to generate. I'm going to deselect everything and generate. And then the software will figure out, oh, we got to move here. And it will hopefully move the ins and outs for the last piece. And it did. Our in and our out is back over here. So now to hold everything together here, we need. Um, a satin border or a satin line all the way around. I like to start with a satin border and to do that I'm just going to have my last one selected. I'm going to right click in that area and you get the create outline from area edges. I'm going to click on that and we get our box here. Um, we want to do a satin border, which is already selected, and I'm going to change the width up just a little bit from one millimeter to 1.5, and I'm going to click OK and generate. So now I'm going to change that to a little darker color because we have some funky stuff going on here. If you can see in these two sharp points, we have um, some really long, long stitches going. So we might want to break this up a little bit to make it stitch a little smoother or um, just go around and put our own satin border in there or satin line in there. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go up to 400 so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to get out of my 3D so I can kind of see 
where the point is in here and how we want to go around doing that. Let's see about how far in I can go. And let's see where our out is here. It's down here. I'm going to want to start, start my outline where the out of the last layer is. I'm going to select my side to side tool. I'm going to go back into 3D because you can see just a little bit better you want to go edge to edge on this. So I'm just going to start here, work my way around, and this is not going to be perfect. Now I have to decide where I'm going to make my point. And I'm probably just going to go right about here. Yeah, I lost track of where I was going. Here, here. I'm going to go up here and down. Oops, I need to do my... There we go. I'm back on track. over here a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. your steps a little bit closer when you're going on a tighter curve to make it flow more smoothly. And then as I'm going through the bigger curves or straightaways, I do them farther apart. You want to get a little closer together so you have more control. You can shape that around a little better. Okay, now we're coming up to our point again. The main thing on those is to make sure that we catch all the edges so we don't have anything peeking out once we do the stitching. kind of sticky and muggy here today. My hand wants to stick to my tablet. I don't use, I just use, a, um, oh, can't even think what it is at the moment. I don't use the Cintiq or whichever one Holly has now. I think she upgraded to the newer one. I just use the tablet and I watch my screen. For me, that's more comfortable. I have a large monitor and um, my eyesight isn't so great anymore. really helps. Okay, we're almost to the end here. And finish. Enter. And escape to drop my tool. Come back out so we can see what we have here. Now you can see that um, we've made these sharp points not sticking way out in out into the base quite so far. So we can delete that. And we should have, all of our edges should be covered when this stitch is out. Um, it should cover all these edges and nothing should be able to pull out. So, if you have a more fancy design, some butterflies or artwork, you know, may have curls and swirls and stuff like that. And you would add all of those elements before you did, you would do your outside part. Still, this is really flat. And, um, you know, if you take it, stitch it out, rinse it out, 
and dry it, it's going to be flat. Um, you could do this, do the body part and the head part, add some antenna, and um, just with this, when you dried it, you could dry it over a corner of something so the wings would be up and, you know, that would give you a three-dimensional type thing. It's not flat anymore. Another thing we can do, I'm going to go back out to my one-to-one. -one. I want to select all these pieces and I'm going to group it so nothing moves on me. And I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to move that one off to the side. Now, my decision here is how I want to do the body of the butterfly. Do I want the body to be with the bottom piece or the top piece? I'm thinking I'm thinking the bottom piece. So we would need to finish this off. And then, yes, bottom. <laughs> How I would do that, it's out of my way for a second here. Get out of 3D so I can see what I'm doing. Um, hmm, I didn't really give a lot of thought to how to do the body. I'm thinking we would have, well, we have to create some kind of a base for our stitches to sit on, whether we're going to do satin or a fill stitch. And um, I shy away from satin stitch that is too wide for lace because it has a tendency to puff up and pull away and get kind of funny looking once it dries out sometimes. So I want to see how wide the widest part of my butterfly body is. Mm, it's well over the half of the maximum we should go, which maximum is usually between 9 and 10 millimeters, and this is at about 6.5. So I think I would probably do this um, as a satin stitch, but then I'm going to give it a uh, a pattern so it doesn't poof up and move away or you know pull away from the rest of the design. So the first thing I want to do is build just a slight base for that satin stitch to sit on. So I'm going to take my area tool, outline this, Sometimes when you're creating something like this, you're flying by the seat of your pants, trying to figure out which way is going to work best for what you want to do. Okay, so we have our body here. I'm going to right click on it because it is highlighted right now. Go to my stitch settings. I'm going to remove the underlay because this layer is going to be part of our underlay. Go to complex fill and for this I think I'm going to use just a little bit tighter um, grid. So I'm probably just going to do it at a 4. And I am going to use smooth edges. I'm going to click OK. And there we have it going side to side. I'm going to copy and paste that. And oops, I get on my screen here. I'm gonna move my in and out. Oops, that's the wrong one. I want to move my in and my out on the first one, top to bottom. Then I'm gonna take that second one, change the angle.
generate. So we're going up and down. So now we have a base to kind of go by. I can see here it's not quite following the line of the butterfly, but we'll see what we can do with that. And now I'm going to put in a satin. Let's see if we have. We'll check questions here quick. Okay, why a base for the body? Um, we need something to put under the parts that are sticking away from the base that we already have. Both of these are very light. You know, when we go to 3D view, you can really see right through them yet. We will be doing something or our satin once we get this figured in. Um, could you use mylar with this type of lace work? Um, I have. Some people think it um, will break away too much because there's too many penetrations. Um, I think for me, the things that I've used it on don't get handled a real lot, so then they, so then it stays in and it does give it a nice little shimmer. Um, no, I'm not going to create a void under this part of the body in our other base. I'm going to leave that there because we still, we don't have a real big build up here. We can still see through it. What I'm going to do is grab my side-to-side -side satin, and I'm just going to oh, get out of 3D so I can kind of see. I want to make sure I am right on the edge here. Like I said, we may have to do some fiddling, which Jill likes to do. She's good at that. In this area where if we want it to make it look more like it has a head. So I'm just going right along the edge here. I'm not exactly following my artwork. And there's our satin body. And we'll go into 3D and I'm going to change that. Let's go with a lighter blue so we can kind of see what we have. You can see our underlay is kind of peeking out in some of these areas and we are kind of wide right here for our satin. So before I do any changes I want to give this body a little bit of a pattern and I'm going to enable a satin fill. I'm going to select a pattern I don't have half as many patterns as Holly does, so we'll see what we have here. I think we'll try pattern 8. And I like to kind of preview, so I move my properties box to the side, and then you can click on apply, and you can see what it looks like. And I kind of like that, so then I'll click OK and it keeps it like that. Generate and save just to make sure we don't lose anything. Now back out to the full screen so we can kind of see what we have now. Okay, two things that we have to do is do something with our, um, our base because that's kind of sticking out and we need to do something with our satin border because that's going to bunch up under here way too much. But if we um, get back up there, if we divide this with a line or a curve, whichever will work best for us, make sure it's tucked under here enough when um, we will stitch this the border and then when we stitch our body on top of that, that'll tie everything together so it won't pull apart 
when we um, when you stitch it out and rinse it. So I'm going to select that and go to our view outline icon and it turns gray. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to divide with a curve. I'm going to get just inside. We have you can see your lines for the body. I'm going to go just inside there. I'm going to click, click. I'm going to scoot around to the other side and do the same thing. And click enter. And you can see the two lines. I'm going to escape for now. So and generate. Got to generate whole. Oh, what's not working here? Let me undo here a few times. Okay, let's try that again. I'm going to divide with a curve. We'll just do one side at a time. And enter. I'll divide the other side. And enter. I'm going to escape. And generate. And there we go. We have our couple of pieces. Okay, this is the piece that we want out of there. So I'm going to control delete that. And now we need to do the same thing done on this part. And view outline, right click on the gray. We'll divide with a line this time. We'll see how that works. Enter, escape, and generate. And find our piece that we don't need. Control delete. Okay, we'll go back to full screen. Generate one more time. Go to 3D to see what it looks like. We have a little bit of our, excuse me, a little bit of our outline or our base sticking out in a few places here. So we'd either have to pull, make our satin a little bigger, or go in and edit a few points to pull that in underneath. Um, Laura, I did the base because we have to have something for the satin to to su something to support the tail and the head part of the butterfly body. Patty, we can't you can't leave that um, that satin stitch under the body part there. That would be just way too thick. And I'm going to get out of 3D view and go up to 400. Get over here so you can see that our stitches, our satin is going to come up to the body, up to the body. And then our body is going to go on and it's going to catch the edges of those satins and hold everything together so it won't pull apart. Yes, Jill, that was weird when it divided. And the wing is, I think that's because my in and out point is down here. So it, for some reason, divided it there to here and then made this whole piece one. So now we have, um, let me get back up here and see how many pieces do we have. We have three different pieces 
when this one, these two should be merged. Yes, Teresa, sometimes deleting in a satin will cause problems. This time around, it doesn't look to have caused too much of a problem. We'll um, zoom in a little bit on these two areas and you can see that most of where it's a little bit funky here. So if I highlight that and go to the um, view angle, you can see that some of my angles are a little goofy. I can move them. and straighten them out a little bit. On this side, it looks to be okay. And this side looks pretty good. I think I'll move this one down a little bit so it catches that corner a little more. And this one, you can see it's kind of short. I would just make it Go all the way and angle this one just a little bit. And I'm going to back out of here and generate. If you make a lot of changes on different pieces, I shouldn't say a lot of changes. If you change several different pieces and you try to generate and you just have one of them highlighted, only one of them is going to change. So you need to make sure nothing is selected and then generate and then your ink, then everything that you had changed will change. Yes, Laura, it's like an underlay. Yes, Nancy, this would be stitched out on the wash away stabilizer, the fabric type wash away stabilizer. Okay, now I'm going to see if we can merge these two pieces together so it's all one piece. We'll select them and merge and generate. Okay, now it did make it all one piece. And back out to about 200 so I can see what I'm doing and we'll see where our ins and outs are on this. Okay, the software has made some changes with our ins and outs as we've been adding new things to it. So on our last piece of the layers, our in is down here, our out is up here. On our first side of the butterfly wings, our in is coming where the out was on the lace base, and our out is here. On our next one, we have our in and out, both in the same place, which is okay. And Then our, whoops, we're starting with our lace base. Now we probably would want to move our in up here so it connects better. And we don't have, you want to try to avoid as many jump stitches as possible when you're doing lace type designs because they get tangled into everything and, <coughs> excuse me, can cause make it hard to try and get them out and let's see we our out was up here for the first layer of the body base and we probably want to move that in up here and then in and out for the top layer There we go. Yes, Jill, the lace base would be the same color as the body. I just left it for now so I could see if anything was sticking out. 
or needed to be tucked in. I know you're getting excited. You want me to see move po want me to move points, don't you? Okay, we'll go into get out of the 3D view and I'm going to go up to 400. This is turning into more of a lace lesson than a, a dimensional design lesson. So I want to move these lines in just a little bit so they're tucked under. I'm going to click on the little hand and then the, the needle penetration so I can see where the needle is going in and out. I'm going to need to get a little closer. This is one of the few times when I use my magnifying glass so I can get up there and move the points that I need to move. And I might need to get a little closer. There we go. So now you can, your pointer turns into a little star when you're over one. If you click on it, you get the red X. And then you click and hold, whoops, you get the red X and then you can drag that in. And I can see that a few of these need to be dragged in here. You can select a couple of them at a time and if you grab one, you can pull them all in at one time. This one needs to come in a little. And sometimes finding the exact point that you need is a little tough. You need to, if you move one that you don't like the way it moved, you can always click undo. There. Go back out to full screen and I'm going to generate, get out of this view in 3D and see if that, that pulled most of them in. Okay, Nellie wants to know when you have ins and outs all coming together in the same place, you know, if each one of our pieces of base if all their ins and outs were in the same place, um, that can cause knots at the edge of your embroidery and then your satin may not cover them up. So I do like to spread them out a little bit. But if you're using, one thing I found, if you're using the same color thread for the whole base, some machines, mine, which is a Viking, doesn't do a tie in and tie out if the um, if the points are right in the same place. It just moves on to the next piece. Oops, still have my little hand selected there. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but a lot of it depends on the machine. So not everybody has a Viking machine like mine and I do try to spread the ins and outs a little bit when I can. Okay, Rachel was said that um, earlier I mentioned that you could put different details in here on top of this base before you would add the, um, the outside border and she was wondering if I could demonstrate a little bit of that. Um, now you'll really see how bad I am at doing artwork. Um, one thing that you could do would be to, ooh, we have a yucky cap on the end of this here. I don't like that. You have to change that. But um, one thing you could do, you'd want to make sure that you start, I'm just going to do a little swirl with the satin. Um, you would want to make sure that you start it under the border. And it would be just like um, regular digitizing. And this is terrible. And then this would have to stitch before your outside border did. And then you could, um, 
I'm going to escape out of here, drop my tool. I'm going to copy and paste this. Move over a little bit. I have it copied and pasted. I'm going to flip it. And I'm going to grab that piece and bring it over here. So we probably want to rotate it just a little to make it look like the other one. If you click on it again, you get the little arrows in the corners. And if you see your pointer turns to a little circle so you can rotate. And then kind of move it up into position. And then these two pieces, we would have to select each one. Hold my control key and I can select both of them. Whoops. I have to right click to select them. Because I want to find them in my film strip. Oh, they're way at the bottom. Them. And then I'm going to move them way up to the top before our outside borders. And I generate. You can see they're under the border now. One thing we need to do is our ins and outs. We don't want to have our out on the end. We would want to move that so it goes in. It'll Go in, stitch all the way down here, and then do our satin stitch back out. Otherwise, we would have a jump. Yes, Rachel, you can add details into, um, into the base part of the butterfly without um, attaching it to the border. I like to attach it to the border because then um, you can Either the software will create a travel from one to the other, or you can create that travel that eliminates jump stitches. When you do say, uh, um, I'll just grab this punch ring tool, and if you add something like this into it, you know, add a couple of circles. Escape to drop that. If you add something like that, you're going to have a jump stitch that's going to be need, need to be trimmed on the top and the bottom. So that's why when I do something like this, I try to connect it. Sometimes it doesn't always happen. Sometimes you need um, to have a detail in the middle of nowhere and you have to trim jump, jump stitches. It's unavoidable. The lace base would, um, Nellie, the lace base would work as an underlay for the satins, but um, I find that the underlay for the satin stitch isn't that many extra stitches. Um, let's see here. Let me back out to the full view so we can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to select one of them. First, um, well, I'll select one of them. It's selected, and you can see our stitch count is 313. So I'm going to right click and do my stitch, go to my stitch settings, and I'm going to remove the underlay. And we were at 313. I'm going to click OK. It goes down to 260. So it does remove stitches from the count, but um, I don't think that leaving the underlay makes it overly heavy. Okay, um, now we've got our two butterflies here, and this one looks a little weird. You could add a little decoration to this one. Um, I suppose if you really wanted to, to make it blend a little bit, you could put part of the body in here to make it 
look like it's going with that because what you're going to do now is take this what you would do is take this butterfly it's all grouped together and we'd want to resize it just a little bit smaller probably um, I'm going to try 75. Make sure aspect ratio is or selected. Click OK. Ah, that's too small. I think that would look funny sitting on top of it. So I'm going to go up to 90. There, that's a little bit better. So then you would stitch out both of these. I didn't generate my stitches. Change the count. There we go. You stitch out both of these. Um, rinse them out. I would um, dry this one pretty flat and then I would take this one and bend it over something to kind of get it so the wings, when you do set it down on top of the body, it would look like the wings were up. Okay, Karen says, which is true, and I didn't think about this, is for, we were talking about the underlay under this satin swirl. She says, leaving the underlay there helps it keep its shape which is true, um, being where you're stitching on just on stabilizer, there's no fabric under there, and our base is quite loose, the, um, the satin stitch can have a tendency to pull in and, you know, make it look possibly a little wonky. So that's how I would go about doing this butterfly to make it, uh, you know, a little bit dimensional. Another idea, I'll just run through this quick. This is kind of different, but it could be done the same. Um, would be to, to get a different way for a, di a dimensional butterfly. Would be to stitch a, or digitize a butterfly, not a lace butterfly, and um, stitch it on the fabric. Then, how do I want to say this? You would stitch one piece as lace, and then you could, once you have your butterfly stitched on your fabric, you could take that lace piece and stitch it on top and then that would stay up. So if you had your butterfly on a pillow and then you would have the wings sticking up. Hi, I'm Larry. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was recorded during a live webinar that Holly taught some of her students for digitizing. At this point, she's finished the lesson that she had planned to teach and for the next 20 or 30 minutes, probably, she'll go on and answer random questions from her students during the live webinar. I'm going to cut those off and I'm going to take those and turn them into little video shorts to put here on our YouTube channel later. But for now, you've got this lesson and if you enjoyed it, learned something, please give it a thumbs up. That helps our rankings with YouTube. Um, also, if you'd like a copy of the software, that Holly's using so that you can digitize along with her. We can get you a 30-day trial that's fully functional if you just go to www.trygenerations.com www.trygenerations.com and we'll give you all the details there. Thanks for watching.